Hi, everybody. My name is Ivan Novik, and today I'm here to talk with you about Green Foam Database, in particular, benchmarking Green Foam Database. Green Foam is a run anywhere software. It's a software package you can run on Linux systems of many different sizes, shapes, and colors. And how will you know how well your system is configured, how well your hardware is performing, if you have um gotten what you paid for when it comes to hardware well it comes it, one of the tools that you can use is benchmarking and so today let's walk through running tpch benchmark with green plum and being able to measure starting to get the measurement about your your environment so let's take a look at our notes here and essentially i'm going to walk you through what the process is to to run the tpch benchmark now, there are a number of benchmarks from TPC. There's TPC-C, TPC-H, TPC-B. <laughs> TPC-H is your, your very bread and butter, 22 query data warehousing, business intelligence benchmark. So very basic, big, heavy reporting, analytic group by aggregation joined queries. Great. Now, um, we do have, there are a variety of versions of this floating around on the internet. Uh, I'm going to link you to one here. If you check, all the notes will be in the video description below. But you can take from this location, GitHub, there's a good version of the scripts and benchmark you can run. So go ahead to that um, location and bookmark that. And then on your environment, you're going to need to make sure that you've installed Make and GPCC. I mean, sorry, GCC, the GNU compiler for C. These will be required to build the benchmark data generation code. And then you'll need PHP to run a script to interpret the results of the output. That's actually optional. Uh, you will need the time command because the script runs time to measure the how long every query runs. And uh, probably you're going to want to install Git if you're going to want to clone this repo or download it or however you're going to get it. So essentially what you do, if you can see my screen here, is you CD into the dbgen um, environment. So let's take a look at it here. I've already um, captured this. I've already run this just right before this video just to give it a go myself. But you can see here, I've got single node edition of Greenplum. And again, I'll reference the other video where you can install Greenplum single node following step-by-step -step instructions if you don't already have an environment. But if, assuming you have a Greenplum environment, you essentially run the Git clone. The Git clone will bring down this directory, tpch green plum. And then once it's there, it has a number of, it has everything we need. So you go into the tpch uh, dbgen directory, and in there, there's a whole bunch of source code and a make file. I didn't research this for more than about 30 seconds, but decided to just fix the error I was getting, I had to put CC equals GCC, so it will compile. And then I went ahead and followed the instructions and did make. So you pretty much type make, and it builds the executables. Um, after that, coming back to our cheat sheet here, there are a few scripts that part of this there that uh, are gonna be your primary driving script. So you can see here, <laughs> TPCH um, prepare, and that's going to be used to generate the data, right? And so TPCH prepare, I'll just open it briefly. Um, TPCH.sh. Um, oh, sorry, my bad, my bad. Let me keep going here. Uh, benchmark prepare. Where is benchmark prepare? Benchmark prepare. That's what you're going to do to to create the uh, the data. And essentially, this is a shell script. You can read through it, but um, it's going to use these templates and generate queries. It's going to generate the data using the binary we compiled. There are a few optional flags, but all we need to do is run benchmark prepare minus d, which is the data size. We, and in my example, I did 10, 10 gigabytes because I have a small system and I don't want to waste a lot of time just getting the environment set up. So 10 gigabytes, um, one note is you should, if you want to really benchmark your hardware, you should benchmark with a data size bigger than your memory in, in total, because that's going to ensure that you're not 
repeatedly using the data from the cache. In any case, I ran that. I also ran um, benchmark prepare minus Q, which creates the queries. Um, and I'll walk you through, um, well, just about in a minute, I'll walk you through what those things generate. Um, and then after running um, the prepare, I ran the actual benchmark, tpch or benchmark underscore test.sh. This is the directory, results directory. This is the name of my host. This is the name of the database, which I generated the data into. And this is the name of the user. So the data was created in the tpch database. You can see the tables. It's got a customer table, line item, nation, orders, part, part supply. So it's really mimicking a business. And we created these as append only columnar tables. That's going to be interesting for the future if we decide to test with some different configurations. Um, and then the biggest table should be the line item table. So you can see here is select count star from line item. It's got a um, decent amount of data on my small little system. And that's like, what, 59 million rows. Um, and then just again, just for the sake of looking around and seeing what we've got here, we can check the size of this database, the 16 gigabyte database when everything is included. Um, and we can look into the directories. So let's go into TPCH and see here the reference data. This is where all the data files were generated into. Um, and then in the queries directory, uh, where am I? TPCH, TBN, queries, these are the queries. So you can see here an example of a TPCH query. It's doing, you know, aggregation, some, you know, blah, 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 with some conditions and some group by. So these are benchmark queries for TPCH. These are standard data warehousing workloads. And they're non-trivial. They're non-trivial, especially when you have a non-trivial amount of data. Um, once you start running the workload with benchmark test uh, that stage, then um, you can run top. You can watch the workload. You can see how much CPU it's using and whatnot. Um, but at the end of the day, what's going to happen is, or not at the end of the day, what is going to happen is if you go to the results directory, um, that you created, there's going to be a whole bunch of output. And in the output, you know, the first thing you're going to look at is bench.log. Bench.log is going to record the queries and their runtime. So you can see here, hey, you know, query nine took uh, 1891 seconds, decent amount of time. You know, maybe something is not good with my environment, or maybe, um, maybe it's just a slow cluster I've created, a slow instance. This is somewhere, somewhere in the cloud that's running um and whatnot but you can check every queries runtime and you can run this repeatedly you can even what i'm going to do after this later on is i'm going to actually pull out some queries i'm going to say like hey let's take this query eight it's 154 seconds i'm going to go into the queries directory and look at that query make sure all the statistics up, up to date run it manually run top run explain kind of look into it more and then start changing stuff, start changing stuff in the operating system and the hardware and try and see, you know, let's just take that one query and try and make it faster. Once that's all good, maybe then I'll run the whole thing again after I've made changes and see if I can't run the entire set of queries in a, in a quicker amount of time. Um, in addition to that, as part of your debugging effort or part of your performance improvement effort, um, there are some other useful files. If you get failures um, running the thing, if it all finishes right away, which happened to me the first time because I didn't have this yum install time and it just kind of bombed out trying to run the time command, um, you can look in the subdirectory called errors and there will be the files that show errors for each query. In this case, there are no errors, but it's good to know. And then um, these files, if you're really, uh, understanding your um, operating system internals, these in, these files will help you with metrics about um, 
you know, how the operating system is functioning and um, how, what are the internals, how the database is functioning and give you some insight that you can look into or think about, figure out what your strategy is going to be to get better performance. So all these files are useful and I recommend taking a look at them. Um, other than that, that's pretty much the story. Um, you can then delete the environment, start over, or keep the environment, run specific queries, iterate, look through it, and continue to test. So I encourage everybody to test your environment, know how fast your environment is, make it better, um, continue to continue to improve on your hardware 